Hi, so as far as I'm aware, the ex-YouTuber Rage After Storm, who made the infamous video called Race is, Race is Real last year, as far as, a, as far as I'm aware, she was a teenager at the time that she made the video, or, or was barely out of her teens. Um, also, I understand that she used the Daily Stormer, a neo-Nazi publication, as her source for researching that video. And also, reportedly, Rage After Storm has described Hitler as Germany's greatest leader. So anyone who takes Rage After Storm seriously, in my opinion, is not well. Um, I'd like to say in this video that the scientific community since the 1950s has completely and utterly discredited race, race realism or what it's better known as, as scientific racism. And it's the scientific community has debunked this toxic theory again and again and again and again through dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens, could be hundreds of studies. I'm just going to make reference to about three in this video because I, you know, I can't do justice to it um, by, you know, trying to do all the studies. Um, this is probably going to take a lot more videos to, you know, cover the whole, to do the topic justice. So I'm just going to make reference to three studies. So, um, which basically the three studies debunk the concept of black intellectual inferiority, which is the obsession of so-called race realists, and I prefer to call them racists. Okay, so the first study that I just wanted to reference is one by someone, it was a very early study done in 1961, it was published in 1961 by a man called Klaus Eiferf, and this was a study that was done in Germany following, during the post-1945 occupation of Germany by the US and it's a study of, it's actually a mixed race study of black, the children of black GIs and white German women and also and comparing their IQs with the children of the white GIs and white German women. And they actually found incredibly that the IQs of the black GIs, actually the black GIs children only was 0.5% difference from the white GIs children. So the white GIs children were 90, an average of 97, and the black GIs children were an average of 96.5, which I find is incredible given the fact that the black GIs children would have undoubtedly suffered from a lot of really toxic discrimination in Germany in those days. And despite that, the average IQ was only 0.5 difference. I would say that was very little statistical significance. So that is one study that debunks the genetic theory, because if the genetic theory of black racial inferiority was correct, you'd expect the children who were half black to actually have IQs that were probably about 7.5 points lower than the white ones, and that wasn't the case. Okay, so there's another um, study that I wanted to, re to reference that is by a man called Lee Willemann and other scholars, and that was published in 1974. And again, this was a mixed race study that basically showed that the mixed race children who were half black and half white of white mothers had, a, had an IQ average of nine points more than the children of white fathers and black mothers. And that clearly shows that genetics is not or has very little to do with IQ because any geneticist would tell you that we don't get our intelligence just from one parent, we get it from both. And it's just very interesting that the children of the white mothers had a nine point advantage. And that suggests it's obviously cultural, social, environmental. Um, and then the third study I wanted to reference that you may have heard of is the Flynn effect. Um, it was a study conducted that was published in 1987. Um, an academic called James Flynn did a study of 14 different countries, uh, the IQs of 14 different countries, and found that 
in just one generation, the IQ points could be raised by as much as 25 points in just one generation. So again, that debunks the genetic theory because if IQ is fixed, if it's all in the genes, how would IQ, IQ, average IQs rise by as much as 25 points in one generation? And um, Flynn uh, put this down to improved um, access to education and technology. So those are the studies that I'm just going to reference for this particular video. Obviously, there are loads and loads of other studies. And I put links in the description box to those studies. Um, I also just wanted to make an observation that I myself made just from looking at IQ statistics, IQ figures of different countries. Again, I'll give you a link to where I got the information from. It's basically a list of countries and their average IQ. And I just wanted to draw attention to some interesting figures that undoubtedly you won't get race realists saying anything about. So the first um, interesting figure that I saw with the IQ for Ireland was just 92. And the, interestingly, the IQ for Sierra Leone, which is in West Africa, by the way, Sub-Saharan Africa, is 91. So how do you explain that if you're saying there's such a major discrepancy between black and white IQ? Sierra Leone, it's a much poorer country than Ireland, and Ireland has the advantage of being English-speaking, is in Western Europe, it has an IQ of 92 compared with Sierra Leone that has an IQ of 91. If you're not satisfied with that, there are other European countries with IQs of less than that of Sierra Leone. Um, it, there are Eastern European countries, um, including Albania, Croatia, Serbia, and Bosnia. They all have IQs of, three of them have IQs, average IQs of 90, and one of them has an I, average IQ of 89. Another thing I wanted to point out, so just please explain that, race realists, explain how those European countries where people have Caucasian skulls, how did they, if it's all to do with genes, how did they end up getting their IQs, average IQs less than Sierra Leone? Okay. Um, another interesting um, figure was that of the Philippines, because all you white supremacists just love going on about the Asian having Asians having superior IQs, well, there are a number of Asian countries that actually don't have really high IQs. And one of them was the Philippines, and their average IQ was 86 in that list. And I also wanted just to make it just a point about the Asian um, issue generally. Yes, no one's going to dispute the fact that about six Asian countries are at the top of the world's IQ statistics, but it's pretty obvious to anyone with a modicum of intelligence that the reason the Asians have such do so well in IQ scores is because they have a very, very strong work ethic in their culture and they really prize study uh, above lots of other things. And if you obviously, anyone knows that if you spend a lot of time studying, you're going to do better in your, in tests. So. That is the explanation for the, ra the Asian, Asians having much better IQ scores than other races. Um, I'd also like to mention that, you know, why, why is it that you race realists, as I said, I like to call you racists, are so unhealthily pre preoccupied with IQ? Um, it's because a good portion of you want to do horrible things to black people. You're sadists. You're not very nice people. And you want justification to do horrible things to black people. Like you want to introduce segregation, deportation, eugenics, and possibly genocide. I, I think another portion of you are just really, really inadequate. You basically want to feel that you have there's a scapegoat in society so you can say, oh, I'm better than that person. And, and that's another portion of what of people who push this IQ issue so fiercely. I'd just be interested in knowing a lot of your IQ scores. Um, please know that just because, you know, the average white IQ is 100 doesn't mean you're going to have 100. And also know that 100 isn't particularly high anyway. Um, is there anything else that I want to say? I don't believe there's anything else I have to say in this video. I'd just be interested in, in hearing any actual serious arguments um, to you know, I'd be interested to see if anyone can come up with any serious arguments to refute the, you know, studies that I've cited here. 
and just know that one line arguments or two line statements are, are not good enough. Um, so yes, I'd be interested in hearing anyone's comments about this. Thank you for listening and bye.